peoples, are Swamp here, and welcome to episode 23 of the Great Stray 2 Resolve. Last time, we completed the second case in the game. We proved that basically Sham Spear, he was basically trying to kill Soseki in order to get the loot that was hidden inside of the guy's room. And that Olive Green was trying to poison Sham Spear. And now we are starting the third case, which involved a teleporter that apparently went very wrong. And Iris is talking. Iris sabotaged the machine. Iris was not gonna have anyone coming on her territory. Sci-fi does no place in her world. It's either you're part of the Sherlock Holmes mystery empire or you're part of nothing. You're part of the ground. Oh, I'm um, sorry, what was that, Iris? Hmm, what's the matter with you? You've been miles away all morning. Didn't you like where I cooked for breakfast? No, 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 that's not at all. Um. What were we talking about again? Today's paper! It's full of news about the Great Exhibition again! Ah, yes. The Great Exhibition. I'd like to go sometime. And then Van Zeeks, he's just standing outside the entrance. Oh, no! You are not getting in here, my learned Nibonese friend! You are not gonna bring your summation examinations into this world fair! This is a place of legitimacy! You're really not your usual that guy. You see Mary down. Don't you agree, Harley? I'm down too, Iris. Hmm? Did you say something, Iris? Oh gosh, you're even more down. I can't blame Winterbanks for everything now, Iris. For he is dead. Ah! When did you arrive, Mr. Naruto? You want to fight me in my house? I've been here for half an hour already. We had breakfast together. What? Why did you mention it before? I, um, thought you might have known I was here. You know, because breakfast? Hmm, Iris is quite right. You're clearly lacking in vim. So much so that I didn't notice your presence. Thanks. Of course, I could deduce the reason perfectly well with some simple observations. What? Let's see, yes, for example, your tussled hair this morning with all its unruly spikes. Clearly has been deduced of all that. Um, let me stop you right there, Mr. Sholmes, because I think I can see where this is going. My hair always looks like this. It always has. Ever since we first, even, ever since we first met, in fact. Oh, really? How interesting. It just doesn't look like a haircut as such, I suppose. <laughs> Thanks again! It crossed my mind recently. That it's been six months now. Six months? Since I was forbidden from working in court. Since Van Zeeks posted that petition. And basically, apparently, 51% of the population signed it. That, and oddly enough, they all showed the exact same handwriting as Van Zeeks. So I've been wondering how much longer I'm gonna be banned. Well, that would explain why you seem rather glum. Don't you agree, Hurley? Hmm? Did you say something, Iris? Ah, be back to moping. And then Sherlock has another free guy. Ah! Mr. Naruto, when did you get here? What's the matter with Mr. Sholmes today? He seems even more down the dumps than me. You think you'd be excited? Oh, why don't we all see it together? I want to, of course I do, but I can't. Not for the time being. I've been banned from the site. Well, let's just say it didn't help that, ex that I sold explosives to that one Russian fellow. He had a mouse. He was very persuasive. Why not? Why not? Why not? Because I'm a great detective after all. So you were embroiled in some tricky case that you can't be distracted from? Is that it? I remember hearing that you're working on a case, Hurley. I suppose I should try to find out what's going on. By investigating everything in the house. Mantle, I do love a good fire in the colder months. Watching the flames flicker and dance about is just so very relaxing. Cleaning out the chimney isn't so relaxing, though. 
no. Getting covered in sweat isn't my idea of fun. You know, Honey decided he was going to clean out himself last year. And then Sherlock got stuck. Iris, help! I'm stuck in the chimney again! But you can guess what happened, can't you? He got himself stuck inside the flue! Knew it! Called it! He's a very slim man, I admit. But there are limits to where a fully grown man can fit. Not every time he dozes off by the fire. Not every time he dozes off by the fire, he has nightmares about it. Iris! Iris, I had nightmares about the visions I saw in the flames. In the flames, there was a man who resembled me. Though he had his hair style in a drill. And he was wearing a ribbon tie. And he was screaming the name right in court. It was very disturbing. Is this the future or the past? Ah, all these different pieces of evidence from cases that Mr. Sholmes has solved are very interesting. The trouble is, Hurley forgets things so quickly. He never remembers why these things are relevant. The other day, for example, he saw the orange pips that were there and decided to plant them in the garden. Pips? Yes, they're all sprouted now. We have five new little plants. Oh, well, I don't know what case they were from, but if Mr. Sholmes can get oranges to grow outside in England, he should change his profession. Sherlock, basically, he's, that's the power of being a great detective. He's, he created the oranges. He basically made the oranges live. He breathed life into them when they died. Ah, yes, the huge metal chest with a lace cloth laid on it, being used as a table for tea and coffee. It's very sturdy, that's for sure, and firmly locked shut. That technically is my father's seat and records of Hardy's many cases. Yes, so I've been led to believe. Though personally, I've never actually seen inside. And that's the way we stay, forever. Those papers are a secret between Daddy and me. If you go opening up uninvited, you might find yourself being bitten. Wait, is that is there a beast out there or something? Love repeat dialogue. Okay, nothing with the dive imports. Books, papers, scientific implements. These shells are stuffed to the gurnals. Miss Tusada wouldn't be able to help herself if she were here. She can't sand a mess. Susie might not be able to sand a mess, but she wouldn't dare touch those shells because we have repeat dialogue. Oh, why not? Everything's in intricate balance. Honey spent ages on it. <clears throat> if you were to touch one thing, the whole lot would come tumbling down. Ah. Cece knows it was very different. It was a very delicate arrangement right from the onset. You made it sound like a meeting of great minds. But the truth is, Mr. Sholmes just needs to tidy up. Which will never happen. What's this next thing on Iris's board? Ah, yes. This is where you note down ideas, isn't it, Iris? What's in the melting pot today? Hmm. The blue carbuncle. Yeah, we already saw this one. Yes, you might get that. It's a case that the holy saw ages ago. The dad to a precious stone. A kabunkle is another name for a garnet, you see, especially if it's cut with a rounded top. Oh, really? And this garnet was blue, was it? Well, that's the thing. They're usually red. No blue garnets have ever been discovered. Oh. So who knows what the stone of gems actually was? That's the real mystery of the case. A proper Herlock Sholmes conundrum, huh? I look forward to finding out what aroma your tea will have, Iris, every single day. Ah, uh, well, I am a different concoction of herbs in the garden every time, so it's never the same twice. When you call it a concoction, it sounds more like a, a scientific experiment than something for tea time. Oh, uh, yes, that's because different blends can have very different properties. Some calm you down, some make you feel jolly, some give you energy, and some will kill you. Today's particular blend is something quite special, so you're really in for a treat. That sounds ominous. Iris tried to develop artiquinine poisoning. There are so many different bottles up there on that charming little set of white shelves. Oh, do be careful, Bruno. You mustn't try the contents of any of the bottles, even if you're hungry. I wouldn't do something stupid like that. I'm not a child or Sherlock, you know. Well, I wish I could say anything for Hurley. The other day, he popped him a football of my acolytes. He what? He said he was hungry. I'll be extra careful. I can die with my show, you know. 
Yeah, we already read this. Yeah, I'm, I'm basically going to just skip through this because I already read this. I'm not going to basically just start reading text that I know is a repeat. You can't get me twice, game. I know what the dialogue is. I know the text, and frankly, I'm not going to be rereading all the text I've done before. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay, the gray and not analyzer. Okay. Yeah, this is a repeat again. Hooray. Okay. Is Yeah, I love when the guy has new text even though this is a repeat of basically the first of the second case. Oh, this is actually new dialogue. This game is messing with me. Okay. Every time I look at that machine, I can't help thinking what my uh, monstrosity is. What is it called again? You can create a telescope. You can analyze absolutely anything you know. It does seem incredible. And at the same time, incredibly useless. Ah, uh, but it does look impressive, does it? So that makes it very useful. How does that make it useful? Because it means you can pour it for lots of money, just like Holmes's kidneys. The pawn brokers always make odd remarks like, what an incredible looking machine. Who, what other pawn brokers are you going to? I mean, for the longest of times, you went to Windebanks. But then again, after Windebanks died, Iris and Sherlock had to shop around for basically pawn brokers who would accept Sherlock's technology and getting just absolutely hammered with photo costs. Huh. <sighs> So Honey often takes it to the pawn shop when he's a little short. It sounds like this thing pulls its weight around here more than I realized by having its weight pulled around. Sherlock and his skull. The skull of one of his victims. The Stradivarius. Ah, yes, Mr. Sean's faithful musical companion. What was this violin made by something famous? Yes, it's a Stradivarius. I'm afraid you'd have to save up for a hundred years before you could have won one, Bruno. If I had to save up for 100 years, I probably wouldn't buy choose a violin, personally. Oh, what would you buy, then? I really have no idea. I think I'll have to do, do it so I can find out. He buys a fancy toilet brush. Because this is Phoenix's ancestor we're talking about. Event six months ago. Half a year ago now, I took on the defense of a young girl in a trial... Trial heard at the Old Bailey. What at first seemed like a simple case of murder that took place at a London pawn brokery turned out to be one part of a much more far-reaching plot that involved the British government. During the course of the trial, it was found that I made an unavoidable yet at the same time unforgivable mistake. You used Morse code. Words fail me. This situation is utterly deplorable. Mr. Arudo! Yes, my lord? I will decline and decide upon your fate following the conclusion of this trial. Of course, my lord. In the end, I had my right to represent people in court revoked. I was told I had to spend my time in research and study, so that's what I've been doing. You have, haven't you, Bruno? We know those big fat tomes about British law in your room and the notes about Sholmes, Sholmes these old cases. Honey's old cases. Brewing Iris' special blend of tea. Fetching my daily bread for me. You've become something of a manservant around here. You are my boy. You are Garçon. No one says me tea like Garçon. No one gives me foot rubs like Garçon. No one corrects my logic like Garçon. Start in the silhouette next, Master Naruto. You must polish all of my spoons. My 500 spoons. And then my, and then you must rewire my 5 million music boxes. Well, I'm thinking I'm gonna, well, I'm thinking of going to ask the powers that be to reconsider. Specifically Lord Strongheart at the British Supreme Court on Whitehall. Lord Strongheart? He's nothing. He's a weak compared to me, Bruno. I could give you your rights back right now. Ah, ah, the delightful Lord Chief Justice. Not my favorite fellow, 
He's not mine either, but he's the man I have to talk to. He's the only one who can grant permission for me to start working in the courts again. And I had the hiccups. I came to Britain to become the best lawyer I could. I can't do that just sitting around here. And then... And then, basically, Stronger. Okay, Rudo, you can serve in the court. Really? Now, you're gonna have to serve under, under Van Zeeks. You'll be his assistant. What? No, I am not going to have him as my assistant. No. But you could teach him your ways, Zeeky. Hmm. Something awful. I will teach him about the hollowed chalice. The Great Exhibition. The whole of London has been swept up in this Great Exhibition, hasn't it? The most advanced science, the most modern technology, the finest works of art and feats of engineering. For the next six months, our capital will be showcasing these things, and the world will be watching. And you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to look down on London from one of those lovely balloons and drop the gas bombs. L look down on... Do, do you mean those things? Fly? Yes, of course! They fly high in the sky and don't even need wings to do it! All you need is hot air! And then just Van Zeeks. My lonely booty's friend, I have a favor that you would be per- I have a job that is perfect for you. And then just Van Zeeks ties Rian the suitcase to some wires uh, balloon. Why is it not rising? Because I am not a hot air balloon. Not that your head is full of hot air, my lord Nipponese friend. But how? How is the how's hot air have anything to do with flying? It makes no sense. I can't understand it at all. That's true to have a lot new to upset air. Down is also a lot to Mookie. Stop loving my lines. That's true of a lot of new scientific discoveries. Most people can't understand them at first. When a hundred years time, all these things will be just common knowledge. I suppose they might be. Mind you, some of the science being demonstrated seems very questionable. Something went wrong in the opening experimentation stage yesterday, apparently. There was a huge explosion. Still, I wish I'd see it, though. I love to see how bad some of these scam experiments really are. I laugh at them. Only I can stand the people in this city. Says the innocent ten-year-old girl who who basically has... who all in, who who basically controls the police. Iris controls the police. See here? Every page of this paper carries some article or other about the Great Exhibition. But the brighter things shine, the darker the shadows that are cast behind them. Personally, I find myself drawn to the darkness, to the impenetrable. That is my proper atmosphere. I look from the shadows. Shadows cast behind. Is that a metaphor way of referring to the back page of the paper? So many glowing reports about the Great Exhibition and everything that's going on there. Other than that, other than this gloomy looking one that is. Oh, yeah, that lost cat. Wait, what? That cat is lost! What's the matter, Runo? The Reaper attacked? That, that's Lord Van Zeeks! This must be what Mr. Sholmes was talking about. Does he know any more, I wonder? The Reaper attacked. It says in the paper that Lord Van Zeeks was attacked. That's terrible! You know the legend of the Reaper of the Bailey, of course, don't you? Only do well, in fact. Yes, the Prosker, Prosker Barak Van Zeek. They say that the Reaper is the Prosker in a case. There's no salvation for whoever's in the dock. Even if the defendant is found not guilty. Once the Reaper has someone in his sights, one way or another, that person's time left on this earth will be short. London's finest rogues always find some way around the law. They'll stop at nothing to secure an acquittal or a trial, falsifying evidence, paying sham witnesses, threatening jurors, bribing judges. But even such devious tactics as these cannot save them from the hand of the Reaper. As you've experienced yourself, haven't you, Mr. Naruto? Yes, I've seen the Reaper's retribution at work. 
Many of these criminal rogues are reckless and quite unafraid to die. If a leader among the fraternity is seen to have been taken by the Reaper, retaliation like this is, uh, does occur. Really, the capital has a never-ending supply of such scoundrels. So, do you mean Lord Van Zeex has been attacked like this before? This isn't the first time? Oh yes, my learned Nipponese friend. I have been attacked for many reasons. One such was when a bunch of Nipponese attacked me for my views. Of course, I fought them off with my advanced martial arts techniques. I have learned the te your techniques so that way I can use them against you. I have studied all kinds of martial arts from around the world in order to counteract the devious. He's quite an accomplished combatant, you know. He doesn't take these attacks lying down. He go, he breaks, after he kicks the asses in the streets, he then proceeds to break down the door with a that firm kick. You know that whole, that whole the prosecutor's bench kick he does? He basically breaks down the door. He breaks it down. And then he starts messing up the place. He flips over tables. Although it seems that his assailants were armed with guns this time. Oh my goodness, is, is he alright then? Is Lord Van Zeke's hurt? My dear fellows, how on earth would I know? Well, in the article it says, as to what of Lord Van Zeke's in his condition, all will be written tomorrow morning's edition. Ah, I see. Well, we shall have to be patient then. No, no, no. Like, I can't wait until tomorrow. In that case, you shall have to inquire with somebody in the know. But who? Lord Stronger, perhaps? Gloomy mood. Are you investigating a particularly tricky case at the moment, Mr. Sholmes? Hmm, you could say that, I suppose. Nothing more to add? That's not like you. What sort of, ca what sort of case is it? Shh! Quiet, Mr. Naruto. The voice is not talking to me again. We must not discuss it here. We never know who might be listening. The voices are always listening, Mr. Naruto. You're acting very strange, Hurley. What do you mean, Iris? Well, usually, the more mysterious and complicated cases, the better Hurley's mood. Ah, ah. Is it really a case that's bothering you? Or you can't debate again. I told you, Hurley, you can't. It's not going to make you immortal. Iris, please, you mustn't exercise your astute powers of observation to deduction on me without invitation. You cannot enter my mind, Iris. If you enter my mind without me uh, letting you in, it will destroy you. It will engulf you in the terror. Remember what I always say. Put yourself in the shoes of the individual about whom you're making deductions. I thought you always said it's not illegal if you don't get caught. That too, Iris! I have many sayings! You say that, do you, you Mr. Sholmes? Never mind! Once I've had a cup of tea, I must make my way for at once the crime scene. Ah! Uh, that was a deep sigh. Well, I must be leaving now. Yes, understood. See you later, Mr. Sholmes. Ha! You really are a shameless liar sometimes, my dear fellow. What? You seek to put the off guard and follow me, don't you? Well, you would be wasting your time. I don't even know where I'm going half the time. The thought crossed my mind, but now I'm wondering where you're going. Ha! Ha 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 Well then, see you later indeed. <coughs> listen to him. Listen to him. He's still laughing on his way out the door. Then, Runo, let's get going. Oh, um, Iris, what are you wearing? These are my extortion clothes. This is my extortion outfit, Runo, for when I get the blood on. I don't want the blood splatter saying my good clothes. I've got change to go to the Great Exhibition. You're going to take me. What? But, but I was just about to go to the Supreme Court. Oh, well, that's a fun, too. You're going to take me there, then. I'm taking the country. Iris holds her in a suke at gunpoint. Alright, fine. Just lower that weapon. Would you When I get what I want, Bruno? Of course, 
Now to the Supreme Court, then we'll go to see the Grand Exhibition. Let's move out. New location is added. Consultancy. 22nd of October. Naruto's Legal Consultancy. Got a lot of the Iris' theme wouldn't be playing. The Office Spade. Now Mr. Saw is gone. The shovelers aren't representing the are represented to correct me. Now you have to do it myself. That's not a spade, Mr. Naruto. It's a shovel. Ah, so you're a spider, are you, Runo? You make me sick, you 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 freak of nature. What? You wanna bat it out? Alright, I'm not gonna argue with a not native English speaker who has some kind of gun. Iris would destroy you, Rianisuke. She would destroy you before you even made a point. The kettle's been gently simmering away there on top of the stove as usual. It was con it was kind of misdecided to let send that Japanese tea. You really like it you really like it, don't you, Iris? But for me, it's the sound of the stove and bur burbling kettle that I like the most on bur on biting winter mornings. And it feels even cozy in, in here when the delightful Iris poured the tea for me. I really couldn't manage without that wonderful young girl. I mean, now it's just to hear you say so. Stop putting words in my mouth, please, Iris. Oh, well, you think so different, you know? Because I was thinking about maybe breaking your kneecaps with that shovel. With that shovel over there. It's a spade, Iris. And then Iris breaks up the shovel and then proceeds to whack Rinosuke's knees. What did that mean? What did that mean, Runo? It's a spade. Bang! Right in the knees again. What did that mean, Runo? Hey. And then just Iris whacks Rinosuke on the head with it. Now, at first glance, my desk here might look as though it's a mess. However, it's not a mess at all. Everything is exactly where I want it to be. But whenever Miss Tussaud looks at it, she'd put her hands on her hips and say, Oh, dear. Her way of saying that I should make... Her way of saying that I should make it a more orderly and neat mess. I miss that. You sound just like Carly, you know. He said the same things about his mess. It's the kind of logic that transcends international borders, obviously. Yeah, and then basically, Phoenix goes into Kristoff's office and sees it just as messy as his own office. Kristoff, basically, Phoenix formed that bond. Even though Kristoff hates Phoenix, he can at least bond with him over a me sharing a messy office. The photograph of us all together that day. It makes me a little sad to look at it now, which is why I'd take into lying it flat. But Mr. Sholmes righted it every single time, and now I've grown accustomed to it. I hope we'll all be together again like that one day soon. The Daruma doll. Ah, yes, that Daruma doll I brought with me from Japan. I always intended to color in the other eye once I become a fully-fledged lawyer, but it's still winking at me, like it's trying to say, I can wait, take as long as you need. Or maybe not. I'll just have to keep doing the best I can, I suppose. I could call it every you know, just that one eye, is it? No, no, I, it needs to be done with a bit of ceremony, Iris. It's not just a toy for coloring in, you know. Oh, please, you, you're you just following Iris's laws, Iris's rules. Mr. Salas, tea set that she left here with me. I still think green tea is just too bitter, though. Thank goodness for sugar and milk. Mr. Sholm certainly wasn't expecting the acrid taste that, taste that first time. I never heard anyone laugh scream like that before, or seen anyone fall down the stairs quite like that either. It always brings a smile to my lips when I'm feeling a little down. Oh, Red, you know what that reminds me of? When I push, when I'm gonna, how I'm gonna push you down the stairs just now. The day I gave some, you some black coffee when you weren't expecting it. You fell all the way down the stairs as well, didn't you, Bruno? Yes. Do you think you, we could try to forget that, please, Iris? That doesn't bring a smile to my lips out. But it brings one to mine! Susato's desk. It's Miss Susato's desk. I suppose it won't be used now that she's gone back to Japan. You'll just have to wait here patiently for its old friend to return. Even now, I sometimes find myself pouring a cup of tea for Susie by mistake. Ah, that explains why I sometimes find a steaming cup of tea. 
cup on her desk here. It shocks me every time. But it's just one of your pranks, I see. It's no prank. I miss you. I like talking to her unlike you, you know. We'll save the bear sweet secrets for last. Look at the bronze and anemones gently swaying around the tanks. In the tank. Regular cleaning, some food, and fresh sea water is all they need. That's a conversation, of course. It seems like a live effort at first, but it was worth it. I'm sorry to be able to tell what they're thinking. Funny to think that so many people in London had acquaintances like this once, when they were in vogue. You'd never expect to find sea anemones in the middle of the capital. I think I'll have to name them soon. They'll all be named Charlie. Oh no, Bruno disappeared! What? Ah, uh, I expect he's been eaten by Harley. In the junk. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the Sherlock eats tonight. Da da da. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, R Mr. Naruto's been consumed tonight. Da da. A wimbo up, a wimbo up, a wimbo up, a wimbo up. Ah 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 I think I'd prefer it if you used your imagination more when naming the sea life. Hey, at least Iris didn't eat him. I never did see what Mr. Sawyer's room looks like. I could go in now, of course, but I don't dare. Yeah, because Iris will blast you with her gun. She'll pop a cap in your ass. They say I made young men's riot chambers is a place of bittersweet secrets. Although, from the laughter I used to hear when you would visit, I imagine it's mainly sweet. Oh, we used to have such fun in Susie's room. We were planning ways to extort Gregsy. She told me all sorts of interesting things about your country, you know? I was expecting something something darker, but anyways. Converse. We, yeah, we know what to do. Anyways, I think now would be a good time to end things off. I really appreciate that you took around to watch this episode. You're a great viewer, and I hope you come back for the next one. If you like the video, like, subscribe, comment, share, do whatever you want. With that, I'll see you next time. Bye.